Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I'm going to showcase how we can use AWS and ECS to put a simple Spring Boot application into a Docker container, send that Docker container to AWS, and then kind of expose a very basic endpoint. And I am just going to highlight first that I have created, or tried to create a somewhat representative Markdown file of everything I'm going through, which is going to be linked in the description so you kind of like see the steps because there are quite a few. And it's also worth noting that this is like a very beginner version of setup using AWS ECS. So I'm just going to showcase how we can get it working as fast as possible, but not go into too much detail of all the configurations and settings and things that can actually be defined to optimize and, and so on. So just very quickly before we get started, you should have AWS CLI installed on your local machine. You should have Docker and of course you should have an AWS account. And the first thing we need to do is that we actually need to create a role on AWS, allowing us to kind of connect our local AWS CLI if it's not already connected. So I would inside I am or I am on AWS, create a new user user, let's call this a demo user. And we then need to attach some policy, so kind of like access. And right now, just to make it simple, I'm just going to use administrator access, allowing this user to do everything. And I'm then going to create this user. We then have our demo user. We then need to create an access key, allowing us to actually connect to this user from our local machine. And it's going to be a command line interface access key. And we understand that this is connecting stuff. We don't need tags. We then have our access key and our secret access key from your CLI. So your, your PowerShell, if you're on Windows or similar in other systems, you should be able to see first that if you do AWS dash dash version, we should see that it is connected to like the AWS CLI. You can then do AWS configure, which then prompts you to input first. And here you see, because I previously added like an access key and a secret key, it's going to show the previous one, but I'm just going to override it to add a new one. So I'm just going to paste my access key, paste my secret key, and just going to keep the region EU North 1. You might need to define it if it hasn't defined it before, and the format JSON. So now we have connected our local AWS CLI to AWS. So now we could actually interact and you could actually do almost everything from the CLI of actually creating stuff, deleting stuff and so on. But why we're we doing this is because the first thing you need to do when having a basic local application like this, I have my Spring Boot application. I have a basic Docker file. From this Docker file, I'm then going to be building a pretty simple application. This is actually just a very, very simple Spring Boot application, just providing a single endpoint slash hello, where we present hello world. So what we want to do is then build this and now send it to AWS. And where we're going to be sending it is into the container registry. And we're then going to be inside the container registry, creating a new container repository. And we're going to give it a name and I'm just going to call it demo, maybe a Java demo. And we cannot do capital. So let's just do Java demo like that. We're going to just keep it immutable. We're not going to change any of the settings, so we'll just create a very basic repository. So think of the repository as the position for one specific Docker image. And then very nice feature from AWS here is that we can actually just in the top right side when creating this repository, click view, push commands, and it then shows us very clearly what we need to do. So first, you would need to kind of actually connect the Docker, the local Docker with this kind of. So we just need to authenticate our token for our Docker client to actually be able to push to 
my specific AWS repository. So again, we're copying this first like login setup inside a terminal. I'm just going to paste it and give it a few seconds. And we can see here that login succeeded. And it succeeded because we added the AWS configure like access key for our admin user we just created. So if you do this without having like the connection of a user with the correct access, you're not going to be able to log in. But now just following all the steps, we can then simply build a Docker image and we're going to tag it with the name Java demo. So again, kind of matching our repository on AWS. So I'm going to go into my Spring Boot application. As you see here, currently I have only an old Postgres image, but let's not worry too much about that. And just very quickly, my Docker file, just using a simple base Java Eclipse Tamarin. I'm copying my jar file from my target folder in my Spring Boot application. I'm going to be exposing port 8080, as that's the basis for Spring Boot if we don't change anything. And when it started, I'm going to start my jar file. So now you're using the provided command from AWS, we can build our projects. And for me, it's going to be very fast as I have previously built it. But we see here that we now have our now Docker image called Java demo. We can see here that it's then suggested or prompted by AWS that we need to tag it with the specific tag matching the name of the repository. So I'm just going to copy paste this. And now if we look at the images, we can see we now have a new image called the name of the repository more or less slash Java demo. This then allows us to simply push this new demo and because of the naming and because of the already token created with AWS, when we push it and give it a few seconds, we should see very shortly that it has been pushed to our repository and we should able to reload in here and actually see our latest version of our Spring Boot application. So that's kind of the first steps of connecting AWS to our local machine, pushing the image onto AWS so we can actually use it. And now we're going to go into the ECS part of things. And just a quick note here that there's actually quite a lot of steps because we're creating a cluster. And then for the cluster, we're creating services and tasks. So there's like quite a few mechanics and steps to get this working, but let's just go through all of it. And then I would definitely suggest that you try this yourself and play around with all these features because it, it feels a bit much at first. But let's create a cluster. So let's call it a Java demo cluster, maybe. And in this case, I'm just going to use Fargate, so just keep it serverless. I'm not going to worry about where it's actually running. We're just going to let AWS handle this, but you can also be more specific on which EC2 instances should be behind actually running all of this to be more specific if you need specific uh, requirements. But now I'm just going to use Fargate. I'm not going to touch any of the main setup. And we're then going to give it a few seconds to load. What we then need to do is we actually need to create a task definition. But let's first just let it load to actually see that it works and have a look at how it will be constructed. And let's see. So in here, as you can see, we have our Java demo cluster. I think it might still be setting up in the background, but at least we can see here that our cluster is then going to be running a service. Our service is then going to be running a task. And a task is kind of going to be containing our containers, if that makes sense. So first, we see it successfully created the cluster. We need to go into our task definitions, create a new task definition. And thinking back, our task definition is going to be where we're going to be pointing to our image inside our registry. So we need the URI. So like the specific name or destination for our project. So in here, we can define a task name. I'm just going to call it Java demo 
task. Again, just Fargate is fine. It's going to be running on Linux. That is what we want. We didn't define like the needed CPU and the memory. I'm not going to touch too much here. We could give it some specific tasks if it needs a bit more access to interact with other part of AWS, for example. But again, in this simple example, I'm not going to touch it. We are then going to define our container details. And I'm just going to call this our Java demo container. Our URI is going to be from here inside our image. I'm just going to copy paste that. And we need a port mapping. In this case, because we are going to be exposing port 8080. And in this example, I'm not going to do like a full setup. I'm just going to allow or showcase how we can do a bit more, not very secure way of actually using the public, like public, um, I'm just going to showcase how we can use the public IP of the network. The ECS is running inside, so actually be able to access it. But normally you would probably have some kind of like load balance set up, especially if you have multiple containers, the load balance of being able to kind of provide and distribute the load as needed. And again, ECS, there's a bunch of uh, auto scaling and everything, and it gets a bit more complicated, but for now, just keeping it simple, pointing to a container inside our task definition using a port mapping, exposing port 8080. It's TCP, HTTP, that's all fine. We're not going to worry too much about our limits. You could add environment variables if needed. And everything else, let's just keep it as the default for now. We can then create our task. And we can then see that we now have a task containing this container with our one port mapping. Then going back to our cluster, inside our cluster, we can then create a service. Where a service is then kind of like telling us how many, or pointing to a task to then run a container. So we're going to be creating a service. We are pointing our service to our Java demo task. And we could have revision. So let's say we want to like update a new container. We could, oh, and you update the task, we could do like change the version of the task. So that's like an inbuilt uh, kind of like versioning setup. Let's call this Java demo service. And again, decide task just one. Here we can start doing replication. We could have multiple, so multiple tasks handling multiple containers. But again, let's just keep it simple for now. And we could add uh, a load balancer here, down here if we wanted to, but I'm not going to worry too much about this. But we could, in theory, add an application load balancer. We're then going to pointing to like a HTTP or HTTPS, having pointed to the specific port for our containers, thereby providing actually like a full endpoint. But I'm not going to do this now. I'm just going to try to keep it simple and not add too many elements. So we're creating a task. Or not a task, we're creating a service for our task. And we can see down here that if we just give it a few seconds, we should see, if we go back to our cluster, we can now see that we have one pending. So we have a service telling it to run one task, telling it to start a specific container. So now I'm just going to let it run for a few minutes to kind of have it go through this full process of starting everything. And we should then see that we would have a running container. And I'm then going to do the, the hacky way again, because we skipped the load balancer to kind of showcase how we can actually hit this ring boot application to actually check that we can get a hello world message from the slash hello endpoint. And here we go. We can now see that our cluster has zero pending and one running. If we then go into the cluster, we can see that for our services, its status is active. And if we look at inside the service, we can see that we have one running. If we look at the tasks connected to the service, we can see that we then have this one task where we have one running container. 
to then actually check that we can hit this container. Again, this is not the proper way. Use load balancers, but look going into the container. This, this is a specific container. We can see that the container has a specific public IP. And if we then go into the security group of the container, which is just going to be the default security group for the entire network more or less is connected to, and we just do a little quick and simple adding of uh, inbound rule allowing traffic on port 8080 from anywhere, and we then save this rule. We should then be able to now actually use the public IP. We go to new tab, use the public IP, port 8080, slash hello, and we can see we get hello world. So, what all this means is that we now have again. That's a lot of steps at first to this ECS, and most of this should be automated. There should be some like systems that actually handle most of this stuff. You should definitely not do this manual all the time, but I think it's still good to have a basic understanding of what's actually happening and be able to do this manually, at least early on, to get a better understanding of AWS. But we now have our services. Well, we have our cluster containing a service, running a task, having a container. The container is connected to a security group. The security group is exposing port 8080, and this is the public IP of the container. And again, in the description, there's going to be a link where I'm kind of guiding you through all these steps. If you want them in written form, having a bit more stuff also like this, auto scaling, again, optional. Exposing, you can actually add the application load balancer. Again, here we uh, did the, the public IP. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this showcase of how you can add a Spring Boot application to a Docker container, to AWS a container registry, then to ECS, then expose an endpoint. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I wish you all a wonderful day.